Hey everybody, Siobhan Nicolau here, and today we're going to talk about exactly what emotional energy is and how it plays out in the human experience. Well, let's just begin by saying emotional energy has everything to do with the average human experience. It makes up what we call the world, which is divided, separating, and conflicting. The world is literally created, or our external reality is created by how we feel about everything, and then how we express those feelings in the world. Most people don't realize that just because you take on form means you become part of the emotional energy experience because energy or emotional energy is a counterpart and a component to the world of physical reality. As we're forming in the womb, we are being imprinted with uh, emotional energy from our environment, from our mother, from our father, everything. And the mind isn't there. It's not sufficiently developed till you're about eight. Yes, Bruce Lipton, all those years ago, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind after doing this work for more than half my life to transform negative emotion, I have arrived at these truths that have were yet to be proven scientifically. It's, it's absolutely true. Anyhow, so you have an emotional or a feeling experience first. Uh, a, an emotion is literally means energy in motion. That is a phrase that everybody's known for about 30 years now. It's being used again to drive home a point that has yet to be driven home to the masses. When you feel something, your reaction to that feeling sets the energy in motion. What that means is when you're finally able to identify with the mind through language how you feel, that divides and defines. So you, I am angry, and you say that. You empower that feeling, but yet you split from that feeling. Create a story about why, and then speak it. And the energy of how you feel goes out into the world to become more of the problem. That's why words are called spelling, you know? So emotion is actually denying a feeling and focusing on why you feel the way you do without addressing the feeling. Emotional energy, whether you realize it or not, is responsible for all these things that humans get fascinated with. Without emotional energy, there wouldn't be any ghosts. Without emotional energy, there wouldn't be demons. Without emotional energy, there would be no war. Without emotional energy, there wouldn't be shamanism. There wouldn't be all kinds of things. Because you have to play in the world of shadow to perpetuate the division in the world or the emotional energy that creates it. This is why I'm happy that the attention to the transformation of emotional energy, which I am an expert at, in Houses and in Humans, which we're going to discuss in the playlists that follow this particular one, um, is a very, very important thing for people to realize that we have the respons responsibility and the power within us and, and the love that we are in order to shift it. In truth, emotional energy is love. It just doesn't know itself to be the love that it is. Why is that? Because as humans were taught that love looks a certain way, it feels a certain way, it acts a certain way. We're not taught to be the love that we are in order to make that conscious within ourselves and learn how to love ourselves more. So we stay divided. We judge what is worthy of love and then love it. But love just loves. It doesn't care. It just loves. And so emotional energy is not going to know itself to be the love that it is until we make the unwavering presence of love within us the dominant vibration. There's much more we're going to talk about in this playlist later. But emotional energy is love in truth, again, that doesn't know itself to be the love that it is. And so for us to take it from what we've made it into in the way of the world of illusion to the truth of what it is, is the key to personal and collective freedom from our human experience as we've gotten it so far. Emotional energy creates causes that further divide because they're looking to make somebody wrong instead of healing the feeling 
that created their emotion or their reaction to the observance of it in the world. Emotional energy is so powerful, and it's even more powerful when you reclaim it to be the love that it is. Then emotional energy has no power when you're not playing with it. Well, we say emotional energy is the what creates ghosts in the world, the experience of ghosts and demons. We're not kidding. Most people don't realize that because emotional energy is a physical, is a component to physical reality, when the body dies, unless you reclaim the body as well as the light that it is, <laughs> when the body dies, the emotional energy stays in the world. And then people, through their inner senses, perceive it as something else. Well, they're observing emotional energy. It's, it's not the spirit of the person. The spirit of the person is the purest part, and it's part of everything. It's part of the whole of who you are. But what we're talking about here is this lower frequency band of energy that makes up the totality of negative emotion and physical reality. So the emotional energy of the person stays here on the planet. This is what people want to call past lives. But it's really not a past life. It's just the emotional imprint of your past life that you've left here. And so this is a part of the process. It was in my own as well earlier on, as I was learning how to be present to what is within me, I realized how my emotional energy, it was still active along the quote timeline, which is the eternal now. So when we come back into form, we have the opportunity to reclaim those uh, parts of ourself that we left in action doing sometimes not so great things here in the world. So it's literally a transformation of emotional energy within ourselves that, that dissolves anything that you still might do, be doing because energy doesn't dissipate. That's a scientific fact. It stays. You have you have to transform emotional energy in order for it not to be part of the, the problem here. You can't change matter with matter, but you can change matter with consciousness because matter is consciousness. So we'll talk more about that as well. But this will give you an idea of how vast the topic is about emotional energy. And I have found that within myself, loving myself, showing these parts of me, my emotional energy that was resistant to that love, that in the unwavering presence of the love I make conscious, gives it permission, gives it safety, and softens it to become the love that it is. And sometimes instantaneously, there's not one part of myself that I have found that has not eventually surrendered. So there is hope. And when people start to look at emotional energy on a scientific level, it becomes easier, at least in my book, it made more sense to me. Well, gee, if this is just energy and the essence of this energy is love and I'm making love conscious within me and love is the only thing that's going to work to transform it, just being that presence is enough. You don't have to do anything. You just have to utilize a few tools in order to really get to know what this emotional energy is and how to approach it from the truth of what it is rather than from the resistance we were taught was the way to deal with it. And if we look in the world, which is made of emotional energy externally, we see how none of that has gotten us very far. I also realized that just knowing that emotional energy is this and that isn't helpful. It's being what it, the essence of emotional energy is. It's actually being willing to do the inner work. So you're truly able to help people get to that point within themselves. It's more important to be the essence of being than it is to be the knowing of the being. When actually, when you reclaim the emotional energy, you're reclaiming those parts of your being, which have that information already within them. So it is a way of reclaiming your light to become the totality of who you are, which is pretty darn amazing. <laughs> emotional energy, when you reclaim it, gives you ever access to everything that you are, because you're not denying that part of you, which is also light. 
It's just so fun. So why play in the world of shadow when you can be in the light? In the world, not of the world. Means you can't solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. Being the consciousness of love is what is within the division that you keep wanting to believe is real. So more on emotional energy and houses next.